In today's tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to make your own DIY sound wave art, and I'm also going to show you a couple of different options of how you can display this art on wood signs or canvases. Hey there, everybody. Um, today I'm going to be showing you how to create sound wave art, and it's really not at all hard. Um, but it just takes a few steps, and if you don't know where to go um, to find certain file converters to make this process happen, it can be, um, it can seem really challenging, and it's actually not. Um, so Soundwave R is a really cool and up-and-coming trend um, to sort of preserve a loved one's voice, and you can give it as a gift on like a wood sign or really anything you can imagine and it is a great gift to give to a loved one um, if you want to be able to record a special message or perhaps if you have someone who has passed on and you have an audio recording of them or a video of them um, a great way to sort of um, memorialize them so um, I'm going to show you the process of this and this is sort of what my project looks like in design space right now um, once I've worked through the process of converting my um, video to an audio and my audio to um, wave art and then my wave art to an SVG file. So there's just a, a bit of a process and I have a blog post on this below. So if you watch this video and you want some more detailed steps, you want to know all the links that I'm using for all these converters, that is all for you below this video. So make sure you click on that so you can get all that information um, and you don't have to feel lost um, trying to figure this out for yourself. Okay, so let's get started. <clears throat> the first thing I did here is I recorded, I'm making this for my mom um, as a Mother's Day gift, and um, it's from her grandkids, of course, my kids, and um, I recorded my kids saying, we love you, Mama, happy Mother's Day, um, with my iPhone, so it's just a, a video recording, just like you do anything on your, your iPhone or your Android phone, and then I emailed it to myself, so I just emailed it um, directly to um, my email address from my phone, as an attachment so I'm going to download that and I'm going to save it you can name it whatever you want I'm just going to save it it's going to save as a video file because we made it as a video file on our phone and so we have that here in our downloads bar um, or you can navigate on your downloads in your computer to find it and the next step is going to be to actually convert the video to an audio file because a video file and an audio file they are completely different and you have to have the audio in order to generate a waveform image or the sound wave art that we're creating so i go over here to online-audio-converter.com again i will link this below for you so um, you don't have to try and type this in you can just click the links below and this is going to convert our video into an audio file so i'm just going to click on open files and I'm going to select that video file that I just downloaded and saved to my computer. It's going to upload it. It's going to take a second. Unless your video is super long, it should be a pretty quick process. Um, and I recommend doing, you know, a video that's under a minute for this, this project um, because you don't want to have so much audio that the wavelength is just too long to put on anything. Um, okay, so <clears throat> it's now uploaded. We can see right here. And I'm going to go down to convert, and I'm just going to click on that. It's going to take a second, and it went, it went really quick. Quick, So um, I'm just going to hit download. It says the conversion is complete. Save it to where you want on your computer, or it might default to downloading to your downloads folder. Um, and that's you know fine, too. You can just navigate to your downloads folder. So I'm just going to say Mother's Day Sound Wave Art. We can see our format is a MP3 format, which is an audio file format. So I'm going to save that and that downloaded. It's now an audio file. The next step is going to come over and actually generate a waveform image from an audio file. So to convert our audio into an actual image, we're going to scroll down here. And again, this link to this um, exact site that I'm using for this conversion, it's below this video. So um, just go there if you want to be able to just click on this link and go there for yourself. And I'm just going to click the little arrow to upload a file. And I need to make sure I select my audio file. 
Okay, so it's saying audio conversion is starting and then it said conversion complete. It went pretty fast. Okay, a new page is gonna load and then it's gonna, you're gonna wanna come down here and it's gonna give you some options. Um, this waveform size, I like to select the largest option because it's just gonna give me the highest resolution and I want my resolution to be good. Um, so when I bring it into design space, I'm not you know, getting any like jagged edges that shouldn't be there. Um, <clears throat> the foreground color might be set to red. I like to change it to black, so I'm just gonna do that. And then once I do those two things, I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna hit okay. And it's gonna load. And then when we come down, we're gonna see a preview of our image. So our audio has been successfully converted into a sound wave image. This is what it actually um, would look like. And if you were to like pull up your video right now and listen to it, you'll probably be able to hear the highs and the lows in this sound wave here. Um, so you'll be able to see it kind of match the flow of this sound wave. So you can just right click on this image and hit save as, or you can also enlarge it and click save as, or you can click on this download little link here and the screen looks black right now because I did a black wavelength, but you can also click save image that way. <clears throat> so I'm just gonna name it Soundwave. It'll download as a PNG as you can see. And we've just downloaded that file now, okay? <clears throat> so let me get out of the kids real quick. Okay, so lots of different options to download there. Um, you really don't have to go to that download link right there. You can just right click and hit save as and save it to your computer. Okay, so the next step here is going to be to upload this to Cricut Design Space. Now, um, if you're familiar with using, you know, file converters like Inkscape to convert PNG images to um, SVG images, you can absolutely bring this in and convert it to an SVG image, but there's actually a way to do this in Design Space. Because this is a very simple silhouette image, we don't have to actually go through that extra conversion process in a graphic software. So I'm just gonna pop over to Design Space here, and I'm gonna click my Upload button. I'm gonna browse my computer, and then I'm going to select that PNG file that we just converted um, our audio file from. I'm gonna hit Open. <clears throat> now, it's a PNG image, so it's, it's uploading it as a print then cut because it is a PNG format. Um, so I'm just gonna select complex, I always select complex, um, and then hit continue. Continue again, we don't need to erase anything. So here's the part where you need to make a different selection. It's gonna default to save it as a print then cut because it is a PNG format, but because this is a simple um, silhouette image of the wave art, we can select um, save as cut image, which would be like an SVG cut file, and it will give us the same result. It, you're, not you're not losing anything, you're not changing the shape of it, um, because it's just a silhouette. So I'm gonna select save as cut image and hit save. Okay, and then I need to select it on my screen there and insert it into my canvas. And voila, there we go. We just brought that in and now we have a cut image that can be cut out and put onto a wood sign or if you have something else in mind that you wanna put this on or maybe you wanna put it on a card or something like that. Um, so that was the one I brought in. You can see I've already done this whole process. Now, what I did here <clears throat> is you can design, I'm gonna put this on a wood sign and I'm gonna show you guys just the process of how I put it on a wood sign so you can get a full grasp of this tutorial here. Um, you can design any extra elements any way you want. So um, if you wanna add some words, if you want to um, add you know, some flowers or anything colorful to it, that is totally up to you. Um, I'm gonna be using vinyl for this. Now there's one extra step here we need to make this possible for them to listen or see the video. Now, in my case, I want my mom to be able to see the video. So I want them, uh, my mom to be able to hear my kids' voices and of course see them actually saying the words. So I'm gonna take a second and I'm gonna upload this video to my YouTube channel. And I'm just gonna leave it as um, unlisted so that <clears throat> nobody else on YouTube can see it unless they have the link. So I'm just going to my YouTube channel here. 
<clears throat> and I'm going to click on um, create a video post. And if you have a Gmail account, ha um, opening YouTube is like two seconds. Um, you don't have to use it for anything other than this if you don't want to. Um, it's just a good place to store. Looks like I'm signed into a different account. Let me switch that real quick. <clears throat> Okay, there we go. So I'm just going to click on, oops, excuse me, click on create and then do upload video. I'm going to select my file and I'm going to select my video file here. <clears throat> and um, this is a pretty short video, so it's probably going to take like maybe a couple minutes to upload. That's going to depend on how long your video is. Okay, so I'm just going to name this video um, happy. Mother's Day, and you don't have to give a description. If you want to, you can. So there we go. So we have our video uploaded. <clears throat> this is going to be unlisted, so I'm just going to sail past all this. And this is just because I have a YouTube channel that it's giving me all this these options here. Um, so I'm just going to sail past all this. And then you're going to have this option here for visibility. Click down on that. and. If you set it to public, then anyone can see it. So I don't recommend that. I recommend setting it to unlisted. And the only people who can see it are those who have the link. And I'm going to show you more what that means in a minute when we create what's called a QR code. And I'm going to just go ahead and hit done. And it's going to upload this. It will be visible, but it will not be visible to anybody except you on YouTube at this time. <clears throat> so I'm going to hit done. So it says video is currently unlisted. It can only be seen and shared by anyone with a link. Okay, so I'm just going to click on this video to be able to actually view it. And then I'm going to copy the link right there, or you can just go to view the video and copy the URL, whichever you want to do. And I'm going to come over here to a QR code generator. There are lots of these out there. If, out there, if you don't want to use this one, that's fine. You can probably find another one in two seconds on Google. Um, but this is the one I use, so I'm just going to walk you through the process of how to use this one, okay? So um, this link is a little bit of a fancy link, but I'm going to have that below the video for you, so you can go ahead and go there um, if you want to just use my link here. I'm going to create a QR code, and this website does ask that you create an account just so that it can save your information because you'll see in a minute that it's actually setting up sort of a page for the video to be viewed on. So you have to create an account for that. Just a name and email is all they really need. So I'm going to hit create QR code. And it's going to give me a bunch of options. So I can create a QR code to a website, to uh, social media, to a video, PDF, Facebook. I mean, there's a bunch of different options. Um, an mp3. If you just want it to be the audio file, you can upload the audio file and select the mp3 option. I want it to be able to be a video that she actually views, which is why I uploaded it to YouTube. So if you want it to be a video, then just go ahead and click the video option. Okay, and then hit next. And then here it's just going to give you some customization options, like if you want to change the colors um, of the background, you can. I'm just going to leave it as a default here. You're going to want to name your QR code, so I'm just going to name this um, Soundwave Art for Mama. And then I'm going to come down here. It'll have a little Azturk next to anything that you need to uh, put information into. So it does ask that you put a headline, and I'm just going to put Happy Mother's Day. And in the description, I'm just going to put We Love You. Wyatt, let's see. From Wyatt and Christabella my daughter and son's name okay you can add a button if you want but that's more for like business purposes so I don't I don't add anything else except that there and then you're gonna scroll down here and this is where you're actually going to be able to put in the video so that's why you need the link from your um, YouTube video so I've copied the link here and I'm gonna now put that link right here into 
the video area. I'm going to hit add video. And there we go. So now it's present there. We can see the little preview here. It says, Happy Mother's Day. We love you from Wyatt and Christabella. And um, if you want to change the colors or something, you can. I'm just going to leave it just like that for now. Um, and then you want to just continue and hit next. So at this point, it's going to present you then with um, your QR code options. So it's just going to give you a bunch of different ways to display the QR code. If you want to have it look like this, you can. If you want to have it look, you know, like this, it's just a bunch of different options, whatever you want. Um, I like this option here. So that's what I'm going to select. And then you're going to want to download it. It's going to download it as an image because they used to get scanned as images. Now, if you want to know how to install um, the app for the QR code, that can be found on the blog post below. So I'm just going to click Save. It's a PNG image. And this image I'm going to bring into Design Space as a print then cut image. So let's come over here. And select that and bring it into design space. Okay, I'm going to hit complex, continue, continue again, save as a print then cut image, and then I'm going to bring this into design space. Now there's lots of different ways you can make the QR code available. My goodness, that's big. All right, let's take that down. There's lots of different ways you can make the QR code available. You could put it on like a little gift tag that maybe hangs off the side of the sign. You could put it on the back of the sign. If you want to put it on the front of the sign, you can't. I personally don't like it on the front because it just takes away from the prettiness of the actual wave art and the phrase that I have here. But that is totally up to you. This will be done as a print then cut. I'm going to be using um, printable vinyl vinyl for this. You can also use printable sticker paper and I'm just going to be sticking this on the back of the sign so that my mom can turn it over and scan the code whenever she wants. And I'm going to show you um, which app I use and how the scanning process works when we actually put this together. But for now, what you need to do is now that you've brought all this in here, you just need to think about your composition of, you know, do you want to add text? Do you want to add any other imagery? Um, what size is the sign that you're using or whatever canvas you might be putting this onto. Make sure you measure and scale appropriately. And then I'm going to start cutting out um, the wave art, the words, and my print then cut images here, including the QR code. And um, we're going to assemble this onto the sign. And then I'm going to show you the magic of what happens when you scan the QR code. And it'll bring up the video. And you'll be able to listen and watch the video while seeing the, the wave art on your actual sign. So I'm going to jump over and I'm going to show you how I assemble my sign. Okay, so here I have a wood sign where I'm going to be putting my vinyl on. And you can use a, um, like a canvas if you prefer. Um, any surface like this will work. I went ahead and did my print then cut um, flower image um, and I'm using that for this particular sign here. And so I'm just peeling the printable vinyl up there after I went through the process of sending it to my printer and um, letting my machine cut it out. And I'm just centering it and placing it where I want it on my wood sign. The version I'm going to show you at the end um, actually uses some of my paper flowers um, as sort of a 3D um, decoration. Um, so I'm going to show you that option too, but for those of you who might want to take a simpler approach and just do a print and cut option like this image here, then that can be a very easy way to add some um, color and decoration to the sign without getting too fancy or complicated. So this here is my wavelength image that I have cut out. And I sort of used a black holographic to kind of give it like a little bit of a sound wave effect to it, kind of like it look, would look maybe, at least in my mind. And um, I cut this out with a 12 by 24 inch mat because it was rather long. So I had to make sure that I used the bigger mat so that it would um, 
it would stay together in one piece and I wouldn't have to like separate it into like cut it in half and do two separate pieces. So if you're doing an extra long wavelength like I'm doing here, just use that 12 by 24 mat um, that Cricut provides that you can buy and you won't have any problem. My sign here is 19 inches wide so my wavelength is about 19 inches as well. So all I've done here is I cut it out of my Cricut machine, I'm getting my transfer tape now and I'm going to um, just burnish my design onto the transfer tape so that I can place it onto my wood sign. Okay, so I'm just putting my transfer tape down here and you're going to want to make sure you push it down really good to that transfer tape. Maybe use your uh, Cricut scraper to burnish the design. Burnish is just a fancy term for rubbing the design onto the transfer tape. You just want to make sure that it picks up well for you and nothing tears. Um, so I'm just taking a second to go back and forth over that. I'm now working on placing my sound wavelength image onto my sign. I'm just going to do this about down the center of the sign. Um, I don't really have an exact trick to getting it center other than to just eyeball it and if it helps you, you can measure your sign and kind of give yourself maybe a little pencil mark um, in the middle of the sign to aim where you need to place your wavelength. I gently press with my fingers first and then you can sort of burnish it again with the Cricut Scraper tool um, to get all those little detailed pieces um, that you're going to see from your wavelength. I'm just gently removing my transfer tape now and I'm going to speed this video up just a little bit because um, I kind of go slow, you know, removing my transfer tape and placing it to get my designs lifted and everything. Um, after I get my transfer tape off, I just make sure that all those little detail edges are pushed down really well. The last part of my sign here, and yours might look different, is um, I have a little phrase at the bottom. It says, we love you mama, which is to my mom, and it's part of what my kids say in the video that they're going to be um, being able, my mom's going to be able to see. So I just burnish that design and I put it underneath the sound wave, sound wave length image. And I'm just placing it and then I'm going to burnish that onto the sign and get my transfer tape off. Okay, so my very last step here is I'm going to need to add my QR code to my sign. You can place this wherever you want. I personally like to put it on the back of my sign because I don't want the barcode to be on the front. Um, I think it's better to have it on the back and they can still scan it whenever they want to, but um, you don't have to kind of, it just looks prettier in my opinion to have it on the back. Um, but you can do it however you want. So I just printed this off on some printable vinyl and I just stuck it to the back of my sign. I'm using a QR code app on my iPhone. The links for that are in the uh, blog post. And I just scanned that QR code and my video popped right up. And now that video can be watched and you can see the sound wavelength art that has been placed on the sign that matches the voices in the videos of my kiddos. So I really hope you guys liked this um, video tutorial. This is one option, of course, and another option I did here is I actually took paper flowers and I made um, sort of a 3D paper flower effect on top and I did a sound um, wavelength and my husband's and I's name 
um, and this was kind of a different approach. Um, I used the Easy Press Mini to do iron-on vinyl um, onto the canvas that you're seeing here. So that's another great option. So have fun with this tutorial, make it your own, and make sure you visit that blog post linked below this video um, for all the links and resources that I used in this tutorial. See you there!